Let's welcome. It's, uh, it's a little disorienting being here because the last time I was in this building was 30 years ago when I was a senior. Um, and I'm delighted to be back. Thank you for having me. Um, particularly delighted to be back because my entire story as a dramatist, as a writer in film and stage, began right here and right there in that theater. Um, because it was at Milburn High that I fell in love with, with theater. And it was English classes and drama classes that just sort of inspired me. And it was doing shows. It was, you know, doing, and I was like an awful actor. And I was an awful singer, an awful dancer. But, you know, right there, I was, I was in shows. And it was, you know, really thrilling. And living in such close proximity to New York, because um, I lived in Short Hills, was, was, it was very easy to just take the train, go in, see shows. So every weekend, my life was going in, half price tickets for the seeing shows, seeing that day, seeing things, and just sort of falling in love with theater. And uh, it was all here. It was all absolutely here. So this is like, for me, this is coming back to the font of where my entire life and career began. So it's very cool. So I'm going to go and walk on the stage. Mm -hmm. I'll sing and dance badly. <laughs> uh, so, so I graduated from here. I went to Northwestern, a great theater department. And I started writing plays. And it was a great life. It was a really exciting time to be a writer in uh, in Chicago, there's a writer, David Mamet, who sort of set sort of a baseline tone of modern drama, had sort of just left to go to New York, and it was a very exciting time to be a playwright, um, to be a starving playwright, which I was for 10 years, um, because there's no money in the theater for the most part, uh, but you do it because you love it and you have to do it, and it's, you know, people, people all my friends from Western or in Chicago, and we used to play after play after play. And uh, I had some success as a player in Chicago, enough to get me sort of around the world to play, to my play up to London and various places, to sort of see what it was like to live as a dramatist. And I wrote 10 plays uh, in, about, uh, in about 10 years. And uh, it, was, it was fantastic. It was great. It taught me everything I needed to know about being a dramatist and being a playwright, and I loved it. Um, and my day job for every one of those 10 years was shelving books uh, at, at a law library. So every day I would get up at like 7 o'clock, I'd go to work at 8, and I would shelve books for eight hours. Um, and then I would go home and I would write. And I would just, you know, because that's what I had to do, it's what I love to do. And uh, I would sort of write and write and write and write. And I had productions, we put on big theaters and small theaters all over, because the life in show business, the life of entertainment, the life of an artist, as, as you all know, and I hope many of you are considering this as a way to go, because there is no other life worthwhile. It's an incredibly hard life, um, and it's never easy. It's very competitive. It requires incredible inner drive. There's no one wants to hand you anything. You must make your own name. You must make your own. So sort of define who you are, present it to the world, and say, this is who I am. And if I have to spend 10 years in this horrible job shelving books, I don't care because I can't do anything else. And it's the only thing I want to do. Um, and everyone I know who's in the arts who's successful, whether it's Leonardo DiCaprio or Marty Scorsese, um, great theater directors, Stephen Sondheim, they all believe the same thing. Which is they are on this planet to tell stories, and they will do whatever they have to do to tell them. And it has been easy for none of these people. It's an incredibly challenging road. Um, as I say, for me and for people like that, my colleagues, the only road sort of worth, worth taking, the only road we can take, but I have no ability to do anything but write. Um, so I wrote plays, and I sort of fell into writing movies. It was never a great ambition of mine. I always just wanted to be a playwright. But finally, after 10 years of selling books and living in a tiny little apartment in Chicago in the winter, I thought, maybe I should try something else. You know, maybe, maybe I should try some other form of dramatic writing. Uh, so I fell into two movies because I'd always had an idea to write a football movie because I love football. And in Chicago, it's like the Chicago Bears are what you live for. And there had been this slew of baseball movies. And I really don't like baseball. I don't offend <laughs> anyone. But I really love football. I thought, well, why didn't someone yeah. write a great football movie? So I said, well, I should do it. I should try to write a movie about football because it's, it is a... It is, a, it is the great American sport. It's very cinematic, very visual. You can do a play about football, but you can certainly do a movie about it. So um, I wrote this, this screenplay called Any Given Sunday, which was my version of King Lear set in the NFL. Um, because, because to me, the great inspiration 
in life has been shaped. They're always shaped. I first read here, so then, you know, in the old English um, department, uh, and that was what inspired me. Still inspires me more than anything. So I wrote this screenplay, and through various channels, very quickly got in the hands of director Neil Oliver Stone, um, and he loved it. And uh, the, the day my life changed was the day the phone rang, and I was in my sleazy little Chicago apartment. You know, and it was and it was my agent saying, first agent, first and only agent I ever had saying, sit down, Oliver Stone's gonna call you in five minutes. <laughs> so I was like, right. So five minutes later it was Oliver and he said, um, I want to do your movie, I need to see you in Tokyo in three days. Oh, wow. So that's when my life changed. So so three days later I was in Tokyo where he was gonna jump into one of his movies and we were working on any even Sunday. Um, and there's a great line Byron the poet, you know, once said, I awoke one morning to find I was famous. Um, and that was my experience because I went through none of the interstitial steps of becoming screenplay writer. I didn't go to film school, I didn't study screenplays, I didn't study film. Um, I simply wrote, as a drama, as a playwright, a movie about football. Um, and all of a sudden I was doing it with, with Al Pacino and Jamie Foxx and Cameron Diaz and, and Oliver Stone. So I went from there to there. But the thing that allowed me, I think, to succeed as a screenwriter was just the same work ethic I had as a playwright, which is I get up every morning at five o'clock, I do my job, I work, you know? And I know how to communicate with actors and directors and producers and front of house people, post designers and graphics and lighting designers, because that's what playwrights do. You're constantly in the center of this sort of web. So working with Oliver Stone or Bob Richardson, the DP or Al Pacino, which is what I had been doing in my life. I've been interacting with other sort of sort of theater artists. So I didn't think it was Sunday which led me to meet Ridley Scott, so I think Gladiator, and sort of movie sort of fell in after that. And um, you know, my, my sort of raise on death as a screenwriter was to work with great directors I admired. And very early on, I just made a list of like, here's the directors whose work really inspired me. And it's, you know, top list of Marty Scorsese, and it was, you know, Tim Burton, and Ridley Scott, and Michael Mann, it's just, just great, great directors, because, because filmmaking is a director's medium. And my job is to sort of channel into the eyes of the filmmaker and try to put that on paper, is to facilitate the filmmaker. Uh, as opposed to a player, it's a very different job. Uh, and I just went through that list. I got to meet those people and gradually, over years, began to work with all of them. So that's what I've been doing pretty much for the past 15 years, is, is, is sort of working on, on, on movies, little movies, big movies. Um, you know, I got a chance to work with Scorsese twice. He's actually right now filming a movie of mine in London. Exciting. Um, I have three movies coming out next year, all just too big, one tiny, which is good. Um, and about two years ago, I, I'll be, I'll, I swear to God, I've got two more minutes and you can ask, ask away. The, uh, I was in London working on a movie called Sweeney Top, because so I was also a producer on that movie and it filmed at, uh, at Shepparton Studios, and, and so I was there all the time. And Stephen Sondheim, who is to any American theater artist, the sort of the god of, of why we do what we do. And I understand you're doing Into the Woods, so some of you may, may know exactly what I'm talking about. And Steve and I got to be friends because I spent five years working on the screenplay. Well, that's the other thing about screenplays. There's, there's no short term for any of this. It is, it is the A theater I worked on eight years. You know, Sweeney Todd was five years. Um, and I worked very closely with Steve, and Steve is the ultimate theater animal. So he would come to London and we'd go to theater all the time. And he kept saying, you know, you should write another play. You know, and I hadn't written a play for, for 12 years. And uh, he said, you should keep bugging me to, to write a play. And then one day I walked into the Tate Modern Museum where Mark Rothko's Stevens murals were at that point. And uh, I looked at those paintings and I said, this is the play I want to write. I know nothing about Mark Rothko. I know nothing about abstract expressionism. I know nothing about art. I've never painted a paintbrush in my life except to paint flats in there. Um, <laughs> so, but I said, there's a great there's a play in here. So I wrote this play called Red, I researched it for a year, I hung out with artists, I painted, I got sort of the, the paint under my fingernails, I read everything I could about rock, I read his writing, which is impenetrable, I read all about modern art, um, I talked to people who knew him, and I, then I just wrote this play, which originally we did in London, but I wrote it for the specific theater in mind of the Dunbar Warehouse, which is, which is the greatest theater space in the world. If you ever get a chance to go to London, see anything in the Dunbar Warehouse, it's beautiful, 240 seat box, tiny little box where so sort of the theatrical energy can't escape. It's brilliant. Um, and then it was successful, it went to London, I mean went to went to the West End and then quickly came to Broadway where it was uh, 
where it was this year, very excitingly. So uh, that was great. That was my Broadway debut. And for someone who sort of started here and low those many years ago, going there, seeing Broadway shows, I must say, to walk up and see my name on a marquee at the Golden Theater, where I had seen plays 30 years ago, was the great moment of my life. Truly the great moment. I mean, winning the Tony was lovely. The reviews were great. The money's fantastic. But it's, it's, the, it's the pride, the authorial pride of saying, from nothing, I created this thing. And it's on Broadway, which, which is the pinnacle of world theater. Um, it just fills my heart how excited it is. So I'm uh, you know, busy writing screenplays, busy writing another play, and sort of going on with my, uh, with my life as a writer. All thanks, it must be said, to Melvin High. <laughs> what can I tell you? What can I tell you? Any questions about anything? What's Johnny Depp like? He's just like you'd imagine. <laughs> there you go. That's